uh, how many are welcoming our sister? Will you say hi? Anaitwa Karubu. Can you wave to to the congregation? The Lord is good. And all the times. It is another evening of which we thank God for having led us through the week. Today being Thursday, our fifth day coming together every evening to reason together in the word of the Lord. I welcome everyone on board. I also welcome the online viewers that may the Lord bless us together. From the text that has been read, the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 11, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. The theme, rather the topic of tonight's presentation says that I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. As a young boy, my parents separated when I was two years. Around three years, I lived with my grandmother for years. I started my schooling when I was almost 15 years. And when my mother brought me in Kisumu, she had a lot of debate in herself with many advices. Some were telling her, please take her to Juakali. She took some time thinking on what she can do with me. I stayed with my grandmother for all those years. I was a babysitter. My grandfather was blessed with almost nine wives, well blessed with the children and with grandchildren. I was a babysitter. During the day when the young women were out in the field, I was left home to, to look after the children. In the afternoon, when they are back, I was to take care of the animals. I knew all the cows by name, and they knew my voice. Sometimes I will be rained on out there in the field. And sometimes when it was raining heavily, I will have refuge under the cows when they came together in a flock. I will be sitting under the cows on the tree until the rain passes over. Sometimes it was very cold and yet still I will be out milking the, the animals. I was one person that even when children were playing out there, in a time of eating comes, there were different tiles, tiles of in calling them that the food is ready. And sometimes I'll remain alone on the playing ground when the rest of the young people had been called for food. One day I will always eat after everyone have eaten. One day when it was lunch break, people came home from school. They were eating on top of the table. And I sat under the table. It was a little bit a lengthy table. So I sat under the table. And as the meals were on, the dogs was at the door. And under the table where I sat, there was a 
a milk hut. And as the meals were going on, the dogs will always move their head and their eyes in progressive ways of how people are eating. I and the cat who were under the table were not seeing what was conspiring on top of the table. I just had a voice from the table, one of my brothers throwing the, the bone because they were eating fish. But there is the bone. You can struggle with the cat. The cat never knew that there was a bone being thrown under the table. But because the goat was, the, the, the dog was keen outside there, he trained very fast to grab the bone. Instead of grabbing the bone, struggling with the cart under the table where we were together, by bad luck, the dog bite the side of my leg. And it was a serious bite, very serious one. Ilikuwa kidonda that took years. Kidonda that took years. Because I had no one to take good care of it. During daytime, I will be babysitting a number of children. And in the afternoon, I'll be out in the field. No one was even there to mind the state in which I was. One day, one of my uncles who was born abnormal, as I was seated out there, all the pain that I was going through, the pain because it was in a state of which you could even see the bone. As I was seated out there, this young man, Akagia Nani Anyumba, behind me, because I was putting on a polythene, my the top that I had. The plastics. As I was feeling this pain in me, this young man who was born abnormal, akaingia kwa nyumba na akavunja chupa ya dawa Mimi nilikuwa nimekaa kwa mlango taking care of the children good number of them Behind me the young man came with a sharp sharp broken pieces of the priest When nimekaa I thought that uh, it was a fly nikafikiria ni inzi Lo and behold, when I looked into the shirt, the polythene that I was wearing, it was pool of blood. Shikaivi, kwangalia mkono, ata dawi meja kabisa. Looking behind me, I found him celebrating. One week later, because there was nobody to take care of me, a week later, one of the uncles comes home from Nairobi. And he said that this leg is seriously rotten. And the only way to, to help the young man out was to do the amputation. So we took a motorbike from home down past Ndiwa, going to Homa Bay. Reaching Homa Bay, I found a man scrolling on his buttocks because he had no legs. I look at the man on the road and I say, God, with me, one of my legs is to be amputated. But this man is totally crippled. He's totally crippled with no leg. I lift up my eyes to the Lord and say, God, thank you. So after so many years, finally, Mama came back home. She came along with me in this city. We stayed somewhere in the, the slums. Somewhere in the slums. Kaanza Shule. 
when I was a big boy. The neighbors were advising her, please take her to Juakali because at this age, there is nothing you will do. But because of prayers and persistence, she, she took a courage to take me to school. I was in one of the day schools around primary, starting in class two at 15 years. Class two, class three, deep of class four. I was counted to be one of the best ones in this class. Someone is coming from a shepherd into a town environment in a class. I was trying to be one of the best ones. Reaching class seven, things turned to us. And our brothers came to visit us, but he didn't just come to visit us. After his visit, my mind changed with the school. My mind literally changed with the school. I remember one day, I left home going to school, but I went straight to Lake Victoria. That was late 94. Went to Lake Victoria with another friend. I got this guy, Awinyo Nafanya, and the small boats, Namashua. We gave the money that we had for a tour in the water bodies. The guy left us and uh, just behind the small kichaka, Kumbia Mahenda Pala, Kanuno Banki. Well, we were right in the deep waters, a place of which you could only see the, the Kajulu hills, Kajulu mountains. As it was smoking the bang, anavota bangi na natupulizia pumzi ya bangi. We became more drunk than him. And he turns to us and says, Amen. Will you people add him money? Muni ungeze pesa ama mushuke. He thought he was joking. Please add me money. Na hapa pinye tunaombo pesa, it was like a place where many rivers are cross-crossing under the waters because the water was like just rolling. I said, please can you add money? Or mushuke chini. I said to my friend, I say, Albert, to make from Bali, that even if this man knows on how to swim, he will get it hard to reach to the, to the shore. With us, at least we are going to die, but even if he knows how to swim, it is not going to be easy with him. We don't know what happened. There are some times of which you don't pray long prayer of Abraham, Mesak, and Isaka. This prayer of Abraham and Isaac, you only pray when you have peace, but there are some times you just approach God, God, I am here and I am dying. But there are some times you just come to the presence of God, God, I am here and I'm smelling death. We don't know what conspired. But finally, we were on the other side of Seme. Tukapata jamana washa samaki, tulimsaidia kwa samaki kwanza sa Sakumi, pagasa sita usiku. So that at least he could drove us back in town. I was leaving home going to school, but I was not reaching school. Things were tough on me every now and again. I walked on foot from Kisumu to Homa Bay. Kwa migu. On that day, that is when I received a call while I was in the waters to die. I love what Paul says. 
I have learned in whatever state I am, they are with to contend. Many a times these days, friend, as the Lord has been giving me privileges to, to preach the gospel, I visited the big churches that you can talk of in, here in Kenya. I've been out of the country. Though this is my 20th year standing in your presence after a period of 20 years, but at least every month or two I've been boarding a flight from here going to Nairobi. And at all times I shed tears asking God, am I dreaming or it is me? Have you learned to be contented with what you have? You'll never be a spiritual steward unless you're somebody who is contented with what you have. The gospel had been preached of salvation by faith and grace. All the messages about the second coming Jesus Christ had been preached. But there is one that lacketh thou. And that is the gospel of contentment. I remember invited in West Pokot. I arrived by around 9 p.m. in the afternoon and uh, I found these young men and ladies having a small cup in their hands with the transparent water in the name of milk tea. And I asked them, which class of food is this? Is this breakfast, lunch, or supper? They told me, Pastor, this is our breakfast, this is our lunch, and this is our supper. I say, God, if back where I came from, children are burning schools, homes are being destroyed because there was no enough sugar in the tea. But this one, this is their breakfast, this is their lunch, and this is their supper. You will never be a faithful steward unless you're somebody who is contented with what the Lord has given you. The reason why we are failing in the house of God and not faithfully in his service is because there is lack of contentment. You complained that you have got no shoes, but there is somewhere somebody who has no feet. I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. In the text Paul says, I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be contented. That is whatever my circumstances in life may be. I will not complain. I will not complain. I will make the best of it and make the most of it. There is a lot of complaining. Where you work, there are a lot of complaints within you. Where you are married, there are a lot of complaints in you. You are not satisfied. Where you stay, there are a lot of complaints in you. Why don't you be contented? Why don't you be contented? Friends, to me, if there is one thing that has made me have that contentment, uh, sometimes I sit down and say, God, I think that was another school that you allowed me to pass through. To pass through that school of 15 years. It was the dark days ever. Dark days ever. Friends, what? That is whatever my circumstance in life may be. I will not complain. I will make the best of it and the, make the most of it. I am sure, friends, there is no person in this congregation who does not have something about which he complains. You complain a lot. 
These are the times when life leads us. There are times when life leads us through green pastures and beside still waters. There are times in life when life will lead you through green pastures and beside still waters. But mark my words that uh, it will not always be a pastoral scene per se. And life leads you, friends, through a pastoral scene, green waters, greener pastures, and it will not always be like that, always. And when the waves change, when things get the different direction, but it has not always led alongside and through such a lovely pastoral scenes. There are times when it dips down into the deep depression of discouragement, disappointment, and disillusionment. And you ask, why? Why me? A situation of which you become so much encompassed with disappointments, disillusionment. Life has changed. It is no longer the pastoral scene. Life has taken another direction in you. In this town, friends, what you're going through sometimes, you feel as if you have been deeply down deep into a situation of depression, disillusionment, and discouragement. And you feel as if you've been abandoned and forgotten by God. I say one more time, friend, that sometimes we've never been privileged to go into these big churches. So as a guinea na jechuna, am I dreaming? Remember the first time I was in flight? Nika jechuna. Am I, is it true? Or I'm dreaming. Is this a very shepherd boy? It is a very babysitter for over 15 years. Or I'm dreaming. I complain because I have no shoes. Until I met a man who had no feet. Waswaili walisema ya kompaganda la mua la jana Chungu kalioni ya kivuno. Ganda la mua la jana. Chungu kalioni ya kivuno. Umekula mua, ganda kawa limekauka. Kalitupia pale nje ila chungu. Nikifikia kwa olinaona ya komba mevuna. All that which at times become useless on your table. Kimuaga pale nje. The dogs to them, it will be like a serious harvest to them. Ganda, la mua, la jana, shungu, kalionia, kivuno. Why are we not faithful stewards? It is because we are not yet contented. You are not contented with the job you are doing. You are not contented with the house you live in. You are not contented with the husband you live with. You're not contented with the wife you live with. You're not contented with your children. You're not contented with the car you are driving. And therefore there is a gap in you that has failed not to be fulfilled well. Friends, he says, At such time, it is very easy for us to, to look only at our misfortunes. Sometimes we, we may be just looking at our misfortunes. At such times, we complain. We become cynical and despondent. We have no shoes. But there are some who have no feet. Thank God that you can walk. You have a feet. By the time you cry, oh, my children, oh, my children, there is somebody. 
rest of her life, they have never seen a child. There are some people who hear, oh, you know, my job, my job, I want to resign from this. I, uh, I've been frustrated, forgetting that there are people who have walked with their letters until the letters are retiring in their hands before they get a job somewhere. Oh, my wife, my wife is not blah, 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 forgetting there are people. Yesterday, a friend called me from Nairobi. In fact, Alianza Kupiga when we were at the elder's place. Jamal Lala Kwakiti. Renta yen yen and alive but alala kwakiti. Are we why are we not contented? Why are we not? contented. We lost the house we had been buying. Times were bad and the payments were large. Well, there are some who have lost their health and for years they have been lying in bed suffering intense pain and agony. With you, the highest, pen, the highest drug you can swallow is Panadol for the olia. But some are dying. We went to Aga Khan yesterday. With that single room where we were. When I left the hospital, as we were walking with the fellow elders who were with me, deep in me was shedding tears. I said, God, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder why we, we cannot serve God fully. By the time we are crying of how the business is bad. By the time we are crying, friends, that there is no promotion from where you work. The other day when teachers were almost running on the street. In Migori, I told my wife, please don't make a mistake of going on the street. Don't make a mistake for going on the street. Because there are people who have stayed for over 20 years with the same letters. Some are even qualified more than you. Thank God. Because Thank God because as a chaplain in Rongo University for two years, my money was like, I was paying fee. To the students. They look at me as their father. Sometimes they'll come in my house. A lady came to me, say, Pastor, I've been in this school for the last nine years. Nine years. Umeka kwa shule. Mpaka watoto ambaye niliwafundisha in my second year in one of the secondary schools, wale ingia hapa in form two, wale ingia po graduate when I'm still here. I shed the tears. I told her, what is your balance? Akani ambia. Good enough that the following week, I was to go in the car meeting in Nairobi. So then I told members, I have a daughter who is dying in the next three hours. They collected money. I called her. And I told her, Mama, I'm sending you fee that has been donated by the children of God. When one day I call her to the bank that I want to clear your fee. She fainted. Kwa bank. By the time you're running on the street, 
there are people who just long even for that which you despise. Be contented. Well, there are some who have lost their health. And for years they have been lying in bed suffering intense pain and agony. Your eyes are bad. Well, there are some who are totally blind. Thank God you can see. A woman died with 115 years. 115 years. So you see women coming, you at the entrance. So I asked them when I was given time. Are you people normal upstairs? Are you okay? You make a lot of noise, crying, mnanguka chini, with someone who have died with 115 years. Are you no more? This is not death. This is life celebration. What will you say to a child whose mother died in childbirth when she came of age? The other day I buried a mama, young lady, aliyekufa, Kama najifungua. Church member. I worked in that place and therefore she died behind me. So this little child was taken to a grandma who was a barren woman over 80 years. Kumyonyesha. So I was asking myself which story will be told to her this young girl when she comes of age. You complain, you have got no shoes. But somebody has no feet. Friends, there comes sometimes that uh, I lack children's story. I don't have comedy. When it comes to serious matters. life of lack of contentment is a serious thorn on our flesh. Serious thorn on our flesh. If you have the issue of uh, um, family issues fighting like this victory church has very many young couples, it is because people are not contented. People are not contented. There is this story T. Rushill writes about Hazel Haas, and this is what he has to say. Hazel Haas was born 25 years ago of a humble parents in New Jersey. Three days after her birth, an accident shut the light from her eyes. An accident shut the light from her eyes three years after her birth. But it could not shut the windows of her soul. A gymnasium accident when she was 12 years paralyzed her body. So she could not walk. Blind and paralytic. But the driving power of a courageous will was not crippled. The driving power of a courageous will was never crippled nor blinded. The courageous power was never crippled nor blinded. Aided by the Rotary Club of her own town, she went through school in a wheelchair. Through Columbia University on crutches. Periodically undergoing a series of operations. Fifteen of these operations were performed. The last one taking three doctors three and one and a half hours. But the battle was now won 
she was able to walk again a few years ago. She, be, she secured her icing dog. She was able to walk, but still blind. So she secured her icing dog called Babe. While on the street, walking behind a dog with blindness, while crossing the road, Babe will direct the way. While lecturing in class, Babe was the one directing her to the class using her icing dog. Crossing the busy streets with her icing dog. Babe will not turn the head even if anyone calls because Babe was so much concerned in giving the direction to Ras Hazel Hill. Blindness. She was able to walk. She lectures while Babe sat at her feet. And what was the topic of her lecture? Becoming. Overcoming life challenges. And this was the topic of our lecture. She was able to walk again a few years ago. She secured her icing dog. Whose name was Babe. And since that time, Babe has been her sole companion. They have traveled over 45,000 miles on this continent abroad. Babe guides her through difficult city traffic. Leads her to desk in a crowded hotel lobby. And once a room has been assigned, Babe can find it. Friends, it's using the eyes of a dog to find his way, our way out. And she said, it was just the eye which was blinded. But the force that drives was never crippled or blinded. She locates the ticket window in any rail station. Babe will not turn her head if anyone calls her except her mistress. Miss Hart lectures while Babe sits at her feet. And what is the subject of her lecture? Meeting bravely life losses, overcoming handicaps. Miss Hart says, we have no handicaps except those we create for ourselves. I will not have my sight back if I could. I am too happy in my work. Why are you complaining? After her graduation, my wife came back home. And I asked her, what do you want to do? Because the TSC in our motherland, we may not predict when. She told me, give me like two days to think. So I gave her two days to think. The third day, she comes to me and say, will you lend me some money? I ask her how much. Give me like 5,000. I gave her 5,000. She told me, I want you to take me downtown. So we just took a walk. We went to the electronic shop. I kind of can a blender. He blended the normal blender that we are using for juice, but that was a grain blender at 4,000. She paid the money. And then, to Kapitia Kwa Soko, na kanunua ground at Njugu, Gorogoro Moja. I was thinking, hmm, what idea is this? So we went home. Kufika Nyumbani, akanunua the small sachets is a takeaway, the small sachets. Akangia kwa steamer, akawakasha ili kitu, taste akafana, it was working. So akashaga ili njugu, all of it, just changing its form, just changing the form. And then she packed them. She packed them. That was in the night. The following day, akaibeba. Kwanda usafi, Akaza kutembea nayo on the street. People asking, Mama, what are you selling? She had a language. You know, with us, some of us, Luos, we are so poor in business. She had a good language of business. That day alone, out of 
Then Juku Gorogoro Moja Leon Uno at 450. She came back home with 4,000. Akatoa Zaka, Sadaka. She calls her family, we prayed over it. <laughs> and then Akachuko the rest of the money. The following day, Akaenda Kaleta Karibu Juku Gorogoro Tano. In a span of one week, selling them faithfully, she had like over 50,000. And as, as she was moving with this, people were asking, why don't you also bring the, the peanut butter? I said, poverty is not in the pocket. Poverty is in the brain. paro. <laughs> Don't make noise, nipping your tool. Ah ah. Pare motuo. Okpin. We budget for the machine that people wanted the peanut. And because of her faithfulness, <laughs> in one year's time, the TSC absorbed her. Why are we not able to overcome? It is very easy for us to immortalize great heroes of the past and think of them as men and women vastly different from us, from ourselves. The fact are, they were for the most part commonplace people like the rest of us. Like the rest of us. The other day I was in one of the churches. <laughs> And you start complaining, oh, we don't have money. We don't have money. We don't have a job. I say, it is not a job, it is a brain. Nikaoliza, how many cars are always parked in a church compound? How many cars are always parked in a church compound? They say it's over 100. And how much does they pay to wash those cars at the car wash at around 200? So I told them, it is the brain that is poor. Why don't you use that water in the church compound and members to bring their cars? Na washi magarizao pale, na iyo pesi mpewe in the church account. Like all the cars that I saw here the other day, you just drive your car because I know we have water here. And our youth are complaining they don't have a job. They are here every Sunday. 200 shillings. And that goes to the account and then they find a good project. That one can even, in the span of about three years, they can even buy a bus to run on road. Poverty is not in the pocket, it is in the brain. There is a story of Archer Wallace. He writes... He said there was Isaac Watts, Isaac Watts, one of the voluminous of all hymn writers. Among the numerous hymns he wrote was that of starting one, Come we that love the Lord, that song that we always sing, and let our joys be known. Mm -hmm. Join her in a song with a sweet accord. And thus around the throne, this man Isaac Watts, as a baby was sick and puny, throughout his whole life, he was so frail and delicate that his life was often despaired of. He was so small as to be almost insignificant. Yet, it was said of him that no matter what campaign he was in, his conversation made others forget his smallness of body. Why are you complaining? Why are you not contented? For he was a giant in mind and soul. He became a pastor of a church in London. But many times because of his poor health, he could not preach. At such times, it was his custom to write pastoral letters which were read from the pulpit in his congregation. Opposed to gloomy by temperament, no man did more to make public worship bright and happier than Isaac Words. In 1707, he published his book hymns, his book hymns, hymnals, and spiritual songs. These hymns changed the character of worship. Hundreds of churches, mm -hmm. Watts died in 1748. Yet after almost two centuries, there are mm -hmm, 70 of his hymns in constant use. 
What have you done? We have Finney Crosby, the hymn writer, when she was six years, mm -hmm, she became blind. When she was eight, uh -huh, eight years of age, wrote the following poem. And I said, oh, what a happy child am I. Although I cannot see, I am resolved that in this world, content and I will be. How many pleasures I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and cry and shy, I am, that I'm blind, I will not. And I cannot and I won't, she said. In the 92nd birthday, after 86 years of total blindness, she said, I never fret, never complain, never think of disagreeable thoughts, never find faults with anything and with anybody or anybody. If in all the world you can find a happiest person than I am, bring him to me. I should like to meet him and should like to shake his hands. Why are you complaining? Why are you not contented? You're full of complaint. Pasture who laid the foundation of modern medicine. One would think that Pasteur had a, a healthy body which he labored. No. The fact is that he had a paralytic stroke at the age of 46 which kept him handicapped for the rest of his life. Henry M. Stanley, honored by the whole world and buried in, a, in, a Hem in West Hemister Abbey, surely must have had a good heritage. No. The fact is that he was brought up in an alma house and his real name was not son at all. We find Beethoven writing music although he was deaf. Milton writing poetry although he was blind. In general, the great work of the world has been done by men and women who could have spent their lives complaining. You complain that you have no shoes when there is somebody who has no feet. Tonight, if only we graduate from the spirit of complaint and be contented with what the Lord has done for us, then we shall be for sure faithful stewards to the Lord. Hello, can we all rise with our theme song? Orista. Jesus love sing. I will sing of Jesus love, sing of him who first loved me for he left. Bright world above and died on Calvary. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of Jesus. And let's praise my heart shall give he us die that I might live. I will sing his love to me all the day of the divine art of heaven. Nothing good for him I've done. How could he? Sorry. 
much love best oh lord i own my heart is one help me now my love to show i will sing i will sing of jesus love and let's pray Gracious, loving Father divine. Indeed, you've created us with the capacity to be contented in whatsoever circumstances we are. If your son, Apostle Paul, was to complain, then the gospel could have died in the first century. If he could complain that he's not ready to take out the message and the mysteries, then the gospel could have died in the first century. But he said that he has learned that in whatsoever state he was, they are weak to content. The gospel had been preached of salvation by faith and by grace. The ministries, the mysteries have been talked about for so many aspects of God. But the message of contentment lacketh thou. And that is why your children have lots of complaints. Families are complaining of their wives and their children, of their husbands, of the responsibilities of work they do. We pray that for us to be faithful stewards, we need to have the contentment in us. As we live tonight, if heaven see it fit that tomorrow again we come at your feet to worship you, may your grace cover us in everything. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.